You ever open up your phone's gallery app and think to yourself, wowza, there is a lot of junk in here. Well, Photo Swooper is an app that makes cleaning up your gallery a dead easy task. With the app open, all you do is swipe a photo or video right to keep it and swipe it left to delete it. Once you've sifted through a bunch of photos and videos, you then tap this review items button, then tap on delete items, then allow, and just like that, all of that selected media will be deleted. It honestly makes organizing your phone's media actually somewhat fun, and here's what's even better, the app is also completely free and open source. And with that, welcome to a brand new one-off episode of the best Android apps. And we're starting the year off with a bang by showcasing not just five, not 10, but 15 applications, all of which are not only completely free, but they're all open source too. And just so you're aware, each of today's apps have actually been taken from last month's 25 apps in 25 days series, where I posted daily app videos 25 days in a row. So if you want a full rundown on any of the apps featured in this video, then check out each app's respective full length videos down in the description. All right, second up today is an amazing app that actually takes the very basic default APK installer that comes on literally every Android device and replaces it with a far more feature packed version. Now upfront, the app does require Shizuku to work, but once it's set up, anytime you then install an APK on your phone, you'll see the Installer X revived updater. Even just from a design standpoint, this one looks way better than the default version, but then more importantly, it also unlocks a plethora of advanced features as well. So within the app settings, you can enable this auto deletion option, which will auto delete any APK files after installation. You can also bypass the warning that you would otherwise get when trying to install older outdated APKs. There's also this allow restricted permissions toggle, which gets around that issue on newer versions of Android, where you have to dig deep into an app settings to allow the app access to your phone's restricted settings. And then there's also this grant all requested permissions toggle, which will mean you don't have to open an app's permission settings page to manually grant any required permissions. There's also a heap of other options too, but in short, it basically just makes installing third-party APKs a way, way simpler process. Following that is Pixel Play, which is an offline music player app with one of the most fluid UIs I think I've ever come across. And honestly, it's almost like Google designed the app themselves. I mean, just take a look at it. I'll tap here to play a track and I can then tap this bottom mini play interface, which will expand the full screen player. And then check this out. If I pause this track here or tap the forwards or back buttons, it's all just got this very bouncy and playful vibe about it, much like Google's own Material 3 expressive redesign. Beyond that, the app also supports synced lyrics, it has a sleep timer, and it also has a heap of customization options as well. But if that design isn't quite your vibe, then you may instead prefer Classy Pod, which has a very retro vibe about it, designed to fully replicate that classic iPod experience. And I mean, just look at how authentic this is. It has literally the exact same interface as a classic iPod, complete with this beautifully implemented click wheel that even has haptic vibrations to go with. The app also offers a bunch of customization options, so we can change the device color, we can change the click wheel size, and we can even disable the split screen mode, which I reckon makes the experience even more authentic. And then to continue on with our media related applications, next up is Live Media, which actually transforms any media playback on devices running Android 16 or newer into a live activity. So anytime I play a song on my Pixel 10 here, check this out. Instantly, we get this little live activity pill up here, which shows our currently playing media. I can then tap that pill and we get a larger live notification, which we can use to control our media playback. And we could also tap that live notification to open the active media app. Now, we'll say the design is a little plain and I wish the larger notification expanded to and from the pill when tapping and closing it. You also can't currently scrub through the track either via the notification. But again, for basic media playback functionality, it works beautifully. All right, from there, we've got an app called Toolkit Tiles. And this is an app that actually unlocks a bunch of really handy and downright cool looking tiles for your quick settings panel. You've got these pretty simple, but nonetheless useful add, remove and reset tiles, which are actually connected to one another. Then we've got these coin flip and dice roll tiles, both of which are great for games or for making quick decisions. But then we've got my favorite, much more lively tiles, including this compass tile, this level tile and this lux meter tile, all of which when tapped will actually show you accurate real time readings according to your device's sensors. There's also a few others to go with, so definitely worth exploring. 
But check this out. I've also got this other quick settings tile set up here, which is from the sponsor of this video, Surfshark. And let's say I'm traveling for work and I'm connected to the hotel's public Wi-Fi. Well, rather than having to stay connected to what is an unsecure network, I can just tap that quick settings toggle and without even opening the app, Surfshark VPN will scan for the best available network, connect to it, and my browsing becomes anonymous and safe once more. But that's not even my favorite part about using Surfshark. You see, at the start of this year, my wife gave me this fantastic 100 movie bucket list poster where you scratch off all these classic movies once you've watched them. But the issue is half of them aren't available on any streaming platforms here in Australia. Like take Terminator 2, for example. It's not available on Netflix Australia, but I can just open up the Surfshark app, switch my location to the US, then come back into Netflix, tap the X, then search for it again. And there it is. It's completely unlocked the content that I get access to. Plus there are servers in over 140 locations, meaning I get access to all their different content libraries too. And the best part is that one subscription gets you VPN access to an unlimited number of devices. Plus if you use the link surfshark.com slash Sam Beckman or use the code Sam Beckman, you can get an extra four months of Surfshark and a 30 day money back guarantee. And then one more quick settings tile that I wanted to mention, which is this one here that when tapped, literally switches your phone's network mode. This is from an app called Network Switch. And just an FYI, this app does require Shizuku to work. But once set up, you can then open the app settings to set up your preferred network modes. And by default, the app is set up to switch between 4G and 5G, but you can change these if you like. So I can tap here and change this to 2G or 3G, for example, or I can even select this 4G slash 5G mode. Then I might change mode B here to 4G only, but once you're happy, you just tap save configuration. And that's it. Now in your quick settings panel, you've got a super simple way to switch between your preset network modes, easy as you like. All right, from there, we've got an app called Alembicons. And this is a super useful app that basically lets you create custom icon packs. The best way to think of it is that it's essentially like an upgraded version of that old and no longer available on the Play Store app called Icon Pack Mixer. But if you haven't heard of that app, well, Alembicons works in a very similar way in that it essentially allows you to mix together various icon packs to create one combination pack. And this is particularly useful for phones that don't support manually selecting different app icons, or it's also great for phones that don't properly support icon pack masking. So using Alembicons, I was able to create this beautifully consistent, small and minimal icon pack using my own drops icon pack as the base. And I was able to then use that exported icon pack on my OnePlus 13, which doesn't support icon pack masking. Then we've got Edge Seat, which is a really powerful app that unlocks advanced gestures on your phone. It's kind of like a simpler version of the One Hand Operation Plus app available for Samsung phones. But again, this one is completely open source. With the app open, you'll see that we have the option of customizing a bunch of different zones on the edge of our phone. So in theory, we could set things up so that one zone changes our phone's media volume whilst another changes its notification volume. We could then also set it up so that long pressing on the bottom opens up our quick settings panel. And we could even set it up so that a zone along the top edge controls our phone's brightness level. I will say the app is fairly fresh in its development. So there's limited actions available at the time of making this video. And if you are looking for a more feature packed version, then there's an app called Edge Gestures, which is way more powerful, but it's also not open source. So just keep that in mind. Following that is CoReply. And this is an app that makes typing on your Android phone an infinitely better experience. In short, it's essentially the same as that feature within Gmail where it gives you smart suggestions as you type, but instead of just working within Gmail, CoReply can work across way more apps. So here in WhatsApp, for example, even without typing anything, it'll already suggest a prompt and you can either tap once to accept the next suggested word, or you can also long press to accept the entire suggestion. And for most apps, because CoReply uses Gemini, it should understand the context of the conversation you've been having. So as such, the suggestions should make sense with what you've already been talking about. Look, all I'll say is that whilst I was initially skeptical, after actually using it, I was seriously floored at just how well it works. Then we've got Awake, a beautifully designed alarm clock application. And let me tell you, if you're someone who struggles to wake up in the morning because you're constantly snoozing your alarm, then this might just be the app for you. So again, the design of the app in and of itself looks super sleek, but what makes it even better is that you can choose any of these custom alarm screens, all of which give you different challenges that you've got to complete to dismiss your alarm. 
There's a math challenge one where you've got to solve a maths equation. There's the shake to stop option where you've got to shake your phone 10 times to stop it. There's the tap challenge one where you've got to tap the screen 50 times. And then you've got the toughest of the lot, in my opinion, the scan QR code option where you've got to scan a downloadable QR code just to dismiss your alarm. It is a really cool concept of an alarm clock application. And again, I just love the super modern design that it's wrapped up in. After that is Volume Locker, which in short, lets you lock your phone's various volume sliders to preset levels. So let's say you're handing your phone to a kid to watch a video or something, but you don't want them inadvertently cranking up your phone's volume to the max. Well, you can just use Volume Locker to adjust this media slider to whatever level you feel is appropriate, then you just lock it. And that's all there is to it. Now, when you try to increase your volume, you can't. And then we have DigiPause. And if you're someone who struggles with any sort of phone addiction, then this app might be the solution. It essentially provides you with a bunch of different modes that'll assist you in lowering your phone's screen time. So there's a focus mode that'll block all apps except whitelisted ones or vice versa for a pre-selected amount of time. There's also a straight app blocker, which is kind of like the opposite thing in that it'll just block selected apps indefinitely. And there's also this in-app blocker mode, which will let you use apps like YouTube or Instagram, but will just block the shorts and reels pages. There's also a bunch of other options too. And I should mention the app is apparently still in the experimental testing phase. So there may be a few glitches here and there, but honestly, it has worked nearly flawlessly in all of my testing. All right, second to last is Privacy Flip. And this is an app that seriously levels up your phone's privacy because it'll let you turn on or off certain privacy features depending on whether your phone is locked. This app also requires permissions to be granted via Shizuku, but once it's set up, you can tweak any of these options here depending on what you're looking to achieve. By default, you'll see that it actually disables every single one of these features when your phone is locked. So our Wi-Fi, our Bluetooth, our mobile data, our location, and our NFC. But let's say I don't want it to disable my Wi-Fi, then I can just toggle this like so, but then check this out. When I lock the phone and swipe into my quick settings panel, everything it said it was gonna disable has indeed been turned off. Then if I get out of that and swipe to unlock, then quickly reopen my quick settings panel, all of those features get turned back on immediately. Oh, and it can also disable your camera and microphone access too, if you like. And so finally today we have Privacy Guard, which is an app that makes it way, way easier to see what information Google knows about you. And then it shows you how to delete it. Because here's the thing, whilst Google doesn't outright block you from finding this information, they do make it really, really complicated to find. So Privacy Guard basically acts as a hub, pointing you right to the settings that you need if you want to disable any sort of tracking. It even lets you see all the third-party apps connected to your Google account. And honestly, I was kind of baffled by how many of these showed up on my own list. But there you have it, 15 amazing open source applications that I reckon are worth checking out in some way, shape or form in 2026. If you yourself have any other recommendations for free and open source apps that you love using, definitely let everyone know down in the comments below. But aside from that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.